All right, let's just jump right in. The CPU is obsolete. I mean, wow, that is a huge claim, right? But what if I told you that for some of the biggest problems we're trying to solve, the chip that's powered, well, everything for the last 50 years is about to get left in the dust? Yeah, I'm talking about the CPU, the central processing unit. It's been the heart of it all, hasn't it? That reliable little engine in your phone, your laptop, the massive servers that run the internet, it's literally been the engine of our progress. But that engine is starting to strain. The road ahead, it's looking less like a road and more like a vertical cliff. So what's the problem? It all comes down to demand. You see, things like AI, they're just insatiable. They're hungry for more data, more complex models, and they want it all faster and with more power than our current digital chips can really handle. We're not just slowing down, we are hitting a wall, a hard digital wall. Okay, so let's talk about that wall. Let's really break down why our current computers just can't seem to keep up anymore. How did the very thing that built our modern world suddenly become the bottleneck? It really comes down to this, a total mismatch. On one hand, you've got AI's appetite, and it is just growing like crazy. It wants more data, bigger models, everything. But on the other hand, you've got our digital chips, and they're kind of stuck playing by the old rules. They have to do things one step at a time, all timed by a little clock. And that creates these massive traffic jams, these bottlenecks. Oh, and trying to power through that traffic, it just burns a ridiculous amount of energy. But what if you could just ignore the rules? Just throw the whole rule book out the window? Well, that's exactly what some researchers at Cornell did. They've come up with a solution that doesn't even bother trying to climb that digital wall. Nah, it just phases right through it. It's a totally different way of thinking. And you gotta hear these numbers. You ready for this? This new chip they built, it can do some really complex calculations 100 times faster than a top-of-the-line digital chip. Let me say that again. Not 100% faster, 100 times. That's insane. And just when you think it can't get any crazier, listen to this. It does all that while using 99% less power. Think about that. 100 times the speed for a tiny fraction of the energy. This isn't just a small step up. It's a completely different league. It's a total reimagining of efficiency. So what is this magic thing? It's called a microwave neural network, or MNN for short. And look, this isn't just some theory on a whiteboard. This is a real thing. It's a fully integrated system, all packed onto a single silicon chip. It is the first one ever made. Okay, so the big question is, how? How in the world does it get those kinds of numbers? Well, the answer is actually pretty wild. It basically stops trying to act like a computer, and instead, it just lets physics do the work. All right, check this out. This is the key difference. Your standard CPU, it's a line follower. It does step one, then step two, then step three, all timed perfectly by its internal clock. But this MNN, this microwave brain, it's a completely different beast. It takes all the information, turns it into a bunch of microwave signals, and just lets them loose. They all mix and interact with each other physically, all at once. The answer to the problem just emerges from that interaction, like instantly. This is the core idea, right here. It's called analog computing. Instead of neatly lining everything up into ones and zeros, it does something way cooler. The researchers call it a controlled mush of frequency behaviors, and I love that phrase. It basically turns a math problem into a physics experiment and just lets nature figure it out. And nature, it turns out, is incredibly fast. And when you look at the specs, they are just mind-blowing. It's processing data at tens of gigahertz. I mean, that is just screaming fast. It uses less than 200 milliwatts of power. It basically sips energy. And it's not just a dumb calculator. It's smart. It's getting over 88% accuracy on really tough jobs, which is right up there with the digital guys, but it's doing it with a tiny, tiny fraction of the power. Okay, okay, this is all super cool science, I get it. But what does it actually mean for you and me? Why should we care about some microwave brain on a tiny chip? Well, here's why. This is the kind of tech that could take all that crazy computing power that lives in the cloud and put it right in your pocket. This leads to something that's a huge deal in tech right now, Edge AI. It's a simple idea, really. It means running powerful AI on your device, not on some giant server farm a thousand miles away. We're talking AI on your watch, in your phone, in your car, that doesn't need to be connected to the internet. Plus, it could totally revolutionize things like secure communications and super advanced radar. Now seriously, just pause and think about that for a second. 
Imagine your phone could run the kind of powerful AI we have now, but without ever connecting to the internet. It could do real-time translation, recognize anything you point your camera at, maybe even monitor your health, all of it happening right there on your phone, instantly, without killing your battery and without sending any of your private data anywhere. That's a game changer. So whenever you see a breakthrough this big, you have to ask the question, right? Is this it? Is this the beginning of the end for the digital age? Are we about to see an analog revolution? There's a quote from the researchers that I think just nails it. They talk about a pivot back towards specialized analog computing. It's not about going backwards. It's about realizing that for certain problems, for the absolute toughest challenges we have, maybe the best tool isn't a better calculator. Maybe the best tool is physics. So let's be clear. Does this mean you're gonna throw out your laptop tomorrow? No, of course not. The good old CPU is still the king of general purpose stuff. Think of this MNN chip more like a, a specialist, a coprocessor. It's like having a superpower button you can press when you run into one of those truly massive problems that makes a normal computer just break out in a sweat. And that just leaves us with this really cool thought to chew on for what, 50, 60 years? We've been trying to force the messy, complicated real world into these neat little digital boxes of ones and zeros. But what if the next giant leap in computing isn't about making better boxes, but about learning to embrace the beautiful, chaotic, and lightning-fast world of analog physics? Kind of makes you wonder, doesn't it?